Hey, it's really great uh, today to be uh, welcoming Millie, uh, Millie Hawley, who's from an organisation called Safe Families. Millie, thank you so much for, for joining us for this Tuesday encouragement. Such a pleasure. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Not at all. How does life find you today? Good. I mean, busy with lockdown and all the rest of it, but really good. So. Of course, you have to say you're busy just in case your bosses are watching. Well, exactly. This is it. Um, <laughs> do, I'm doing things, I promise. <laughs> Millie, tell us, tell us a little bit about you. Um, tell us what you do and tell us a bit about Safe Families, if you can, at the same time. Yeah, so um, I'm Millie. I'm born and bred in Bournemouth, so grew up in Boscombe. Um, and for years have been working with people in sort of different, you know, people who've always been struggling with life in different ways. Um, and then God called me to come work for Safe Families about three and a half years ago when we first started working in Bournemouth. And so Safe Families really exists as an, as an organisation that um, at its deep heart is to provide relationship and connection for, particularly for families where they are isolated, struggling, where children are potentially on the trajectory towards care, to say, look, we, we know some people who could come help you. Um, at this point in your life and helping them get stabilised them back on their feet and then being able to thrive within community. So that's kind of what Safe Families does. We work across the United Kingdom and um, we work with about 32 local authorities at the moment but it's increasing all the time and then we have little pods in different areas so I head up the Bournemouth and Dorset team um, with my colleague Rosa and so we yeah that's what we do. Fantastic. And one of your contracts is with um, BCP, our own local authority here, um, yeah. which creates an amazing opportunity, which we'll talk about in a moment. Just before we get to that, can you tell us just something about the, the ethos of um, Safe Families? It's got Christian roots, hasn't it? Can you tell us something about the, the ethos? Yeah, so we passionately believe that actually the church is just uniquely placed in order to be able to serve the communities. And over the years, with lots of things... Um, with kind of local authorities and how all that stuff works, I think often as the church, we've become more nervous around supporting, particularly families where they're struggling, be it because of safeguarding, for the red tape and all of that stuff. And so, uh, so families, we say, well, look, we will take all of that stuff on. Like, we'll take all the safeguarding, we'll take on all of the social worker meetings. If we can just release you guys in the church to go and do what you've always done really beautifully, which is to love and to serve and to help people. And actually, I was in a meeting a few months ago, just before lockdown. Um, and actually, out of that meeting where there were social workers present and health service present and teachers and people from all sorts of um, sectors were there. And the question that was being asked was, what does it help for a family where there's neglect being suffered? What does it take for them to survive and thrive long term? And every out of that meeting, every group that was discussing that question came out with trusting relationships and strong community connections. And Rosa and I were sat in that meeting and thought, oh my goodness, this is the church. Like the church yeah. is so uniquely placed to do this in actually really gentle and easy ways that actually aren't massively taxing or hugely difficult or take a lot of, of time, but actually just offering people what a lot of us have, which is just friendship. And um, where we can often take that for granted, it's a huge thing for family yeah, so yeah. yeah so that's some of what we yeah we do and the heart behind why why we do it fantastic and clearly I mean you've got a contract with the local authority or several local authorities they clearly celebrate the work that you're doing so I mean some people might have the attitude you know local authorities they're very against uh, Christian groups and organizations even the church getting involved in anything clearly that's not your experience no it's not and I think it's often because actually they recognize actually the importance of of the community in doing it and, and you know the budgets are being slashed and cut all the time and social workers aren't able to do what they used to be able to do you know they are just in intense amount of pressure and so with as say families when we can come in and essentially act as the professional thing for the church really you know our team are really well trained they've got some social work backgrounds um, can actually sort of step in at, at that point and be those point people um for for the local authority so it it really works quite well. We, I mean, we sort of call ourselves either bridge builders or kind of essentially a glorified matchmaking service, really, between families who need support and people in the community who can offer it with some oversight from our from our team. So, yeah, really, that's so helpful. Thank you. Can you give us a few um, few examples of some of the stuff that you do? So, I mean, a local authority would come to you perhaps and say, "Look, we need support for 
uh, this family or for this group of children or whatever, what are some of the interventions that you would offer? And, and then perhaps you can link that to some of the opportunities that the church can kind of, uh, or Christians generally can kind of help with as well. Yeah, so it really varies. So we work with families that really want the help, which is which is wonderful. So they have to choose it first and foremost. So they can be offered it by their social workers or whoever, but it's really up for them to say that they want it. And then we're really family centered. So when the family's referred to us, um, our family support team will go out, meet the family, and they'll really do like a, a almost like a coaching session with them. And the question is, what what would it take? What do you feel it would take for your family to thrive? Like what what would help? And so then and then they help set goals then with the family of things that that they really want help with. And it can be any number of things. So it can be often it's just want someone to talk to and have a cup of tea with and just be able to offload to. Sometimes it can be we're really overwhelmed with our our house and how much stuff's in it. And actually we could just do with some help decluttering. It could be or we just want to go for a walk with someone. It could be I don't really know what to do with my children at the moment. And I could just do with someone else who's a parent just giving me some advice. Uh, it could I mean it could be any number of things. It could be we are just feeling really, really overwhelmed and would just be what would really help us is if somebody could just take the kids for an afternoon or for a weekend so that we can just have a little breather and just knowing that that's coming and that happens regularly can be amazing it could be um you know we have an isolated families and they're about to go into hospital to have a baby and have nobody to look after their kids and at the minute those kids would end up in foster care mm -hmm. but actually if we can say there's somebody in your neighborhood and in your community who could take your kids while that's happening and in fact we're doing that in weymouth right this second mum gave birth on Thursday. Thursday she gave birth on Monday and so two volu lovely volunteers in Weymouth have got um, her, her little boy for the weekend and actually for her she was like I can actually relax in hospital knowing my kids are really well looked after and they're in regular contact and all the rest of it so that's just a, one of the you know one of the ways or few of the ways that people can help um, and then we also have um, resource friends so for lots of us there is stuff in our lofts you know like buggies or pushchairs or prams or you know you name it beds tables um, and so we re really then link up the stuff with the people that need it so we put out to our resource friends and say we've got a, a parent for example we've got parents at the minute who are um, being evicted from their homes and actually have somewhere to go but can't haven't got anything to take with them so how can we help resource a home and make it safe enough for the family for the children now to be in and so things like that as well which is is really great so Millie, that's really great. So a whole mm -hmm. range of stuff. So from yeah. the relational to the practical, from quite small interventions to potentially quite large interventions like, hey, go and live in a family home for a few days. Um, yeah. All of those are opportunities, I guess, for individuals or even whole churches to get involved. What do people need to do if they're interested in getting involved in this kind of work or this ministry that, that you offer? I mean, the best thing to do is have a chat with me. So um, I'm, I'll, you, you'll have my email address and things like that. Is just get in touch and have and have a chat because what we always we're all, we're really kind of volunteer led in terms of like we want it to be a really positive experience for people in line with the things that they are, you know, experienced with or want some more experience in or would like to offer and not offer and things like that. So um, everybody that comes to volunteer with us really gets to decide who, where, what, when and how they want to do it so it's really really flexible so because of that the easiest thing is to have a chat with me um, about that and then um there are different ways that people can sign up either to volunteer but we love prayer support like in this at the minute as well like there is so much happening to be covered in prayer is incredible so we will willingly recruit prayer partners in this and also giving as well like um while the local authority contracts um us, it doesn't actually provide all of the support that we want to offer and it means actually that we can't extend in the ways that we would want to either into areas where we haven't got local authority support but we would love to be able to work so things like that so all I say is just have a either go check the website and drop me an email and um, the process that's involved in somebody particularly volunteering is not massively onerous but we have to do quite our due diligence so we take three references do a DBS check there's some training to do and then I'll, I'll do a one-to-one -one. and that's just a really nice people find it quite cathartic but it's just sort of an hour and a half and I just hear your story and your journey and your life and um, just some of the things that you've experienced over life and we just have a chat about some of those 
um, and that's just a way that we really get to know you really, really well um, as well. So, and then, then at that point, if all of that's great, then we'll, we'll we can sign you off for uh, families, and that's either virtually at the minute um, or face to face as well, which we can do. That's amazing, Amelia. Is there an upper or a lower age limit to who can help and support? No, our, I mean in uh, so within the patch I cover, our youngest is nineteen and our oldest is eighty four. Wow. <laughs> So and it's and it's wonderful and we we love the whole range because at the heart of safe families is really that we can be family and so for families they need brothers and sisters and aunties and uncles and grandparents the numbers of families that don't have grandparents is unbelievable and so those often really precious relationships where there's a kind of grandfatherly or grandmotherly type figure who can come into the home so age is definitely not a a limiter at all. Well, that's brilliant. And Millie, my hope is that our conversation today has somewhat wet the appetite. We're, we're going to, you're going to appear in one of our live stream services um, in a few weeks time, which we're yeah. really looking forward to. And we'll hear more about you then and have opportunity to pray for you then um, as well. But also an opportunity, hopefully coming up at some point in February, where there'll be opportunity for us to, or for anyone who's interested to join a Zoom conversation with us uh, to explore what, what does getting involved look like, to maybe ask some slightly more detailed questions um, yeah. on those occasions as well. Millie, just as we draw towards a close, can you just share for us what's real life like at the moment? I mean, you've got your finger on the pulse, you're engaging with families in a whole diverse range of situations. What does COVID mean for, for families as you're seeing it at the moment? It's really tough for them. It's so tough for them. And there are, yeah, it, it makes me a bit emotional as well, just thinking about, they are some of the most resilient people you you can imagine at the moment but life is really hard and if you can just imagine I mean this is not an uncommon story is to have um we have so many families in inappropriate accommodation um and so we've got one family at the minute with five children in two bedrooms on the third floor of a flat and so and trying she's trying to homeschool five of them and just that is just such an incredible challenge when you don't have outside space and you don't have you know the equipment that you need or the space that everybody can kind of spread out in and so it is a it is a massive challenge for so many of our families that are in this situation and just having some like the the, the beauty of just having somebody on the end of the phone of just of an evening they can just go to say it's really really hard it's huge because otherwise they, all they've got is just the kids around them and so that's a challenge we also find anxiety is massive so for, for particularly where we're supporting single isolated single parents where there was no one else around them. The fear of catching COVID, of being unwell and then not looking, being able to look after the child or catching it and heaven forbid, getting very seriously ill and passing away and there being nobody to look after the children is, an, is a very real fear for a lot of our parents at the moment. And so then they're not wanting to go out. They're not, but we know that kids actually think they're gonna need a bit of fresh air and getting a run around. And so just all of that stuff is 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 very, very real at the minute. and really challenging and yet we're hearing beautiful stories come back of just of families that are in the midst of it all finding ways through and volunteers offering just the most wonderful support whether that is dropping something in or being on the end of the phone or popping up to the house and waving from a distance just those little things make an enormous enormous difference and actually for a lot of us they're all things that we can we can do if we've got an hour a week we can just you know can, can do those sorts of things so yeah it's incredibly challenging and um but really beautiful and in fact our, our work has has exponentially grown this year more than it ever has um in in years gone by as well so and it is incredible the local churches are just stepping into the breach time and time again going we're here what can we do how can we help yeah. so it is um yeah so as much as we can link people together then we will do because it is very challenging Millie, thank you so much for sharing with us. And it, it just sounds like there's so many opportunities. There's so much need, particularly in Christchurch, um, you know, a relatively new territory for you since the merger yeah. with uh, Bournemouth and Paul as well. Opportunity and opportunities for people to just come in and serve in small ways or big ways. And, and yeah. Millie, we're just looking forward to exploring how we yeah. can use your, your matchmaking service to match yeah. <laughs> the gifting with the need. Um, yeah, absolutely. And we've got families on our books already waiting for support. So you would be, people will be well used as and when they, when they, when they awesome sign up. Stuff. So.
Well, Millie, be prepared for your phone to light up with phone calls from folk within the life of the church, I pray. And um, I pray. Ayla, as, as I draw to a close, I'd love to pray for you um, and thank for, you. for your ministry. Is that OK? Yeah. Yeah, let's pray together. Father, I thank you for Millie. Thank you so much for Safe Families. Thank you, Lord, for all the amazing work that they're doing. And Lord, we praise you for every single life that's been touched and changed as a consequence of your people just stepping into the gap to try and meet need in small ways or in big ways. And Lord, I just really pray that, Lord, if you're stirring in anyone's heart, even now as they're watching this video, that, Lord, you would just prompt them to take that brave step of contacting Millie uh, to see how they can help serve and meet need in our own local community. So, Lord, we just pray, bless this ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Millie, so great to hear from you. We look forward to seeing you on our live stream and also at some point uh, when we get together to explore the opportunities that are there on a Zoom chat as well. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye.